Booster, go. Retro, go. Vital, we're go flying. Guidance, guidance, go. Launch control, this is Houston. We are go for launch. I feel the need, the need for speed. You could ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Join us or die. All right, well, welcome to Mark Groupie Outdoors, the podcast. Well, got uh, lots of new things coming up. One thing we've got going on here in California, and it's uh, nearly affecting us, is uh, fires here. And in the Mariposa area near our ranch, there's a pretty good fire burning out of control. <clears throat> Excuse me, the best I can tell. And our, our ranch manager, uh, he's in our prayers and thoughts, his his house is in the epicenter of it on Hunters Valley Road there, so that's raging pretty good. And and I don't know what their what the prognosis is. I don't even know what direction it's headed right now, or how many directions it's headed. But uh, that's a that's a big thing that we're dealing with right now. And we uh, got all the people who are affected by that in our prayers and thoughts. And yeah, we've had uh, some some friends that are getting some good bucks in a zone and uh, so we got some pictures of those showing up so deer hunting's happening here in california and and we are actually getting ready ourselves here in the around the 11th or 12th of august we will be headed to wyoming for mule deer and antelope archery so yeah uh, that should be a great hunt coming up then we'll be headed to colorado meanwhile we'll be Sneaking, uh, sneaking in some more pig hunts and uh, and hopefully a salmon fishing trip. So always lots of great stuff happening here. Well, today we're just going to jump right into our guest. Our guest is a jack of all trades. He has uh, been a firefighter. He has been a he is uh, is um, uh, had a rodeo career. He's uh, he's a, I guess a philosophy major. He's a programming director for cro- CrossFit Gymnastics. He's some other things I'm not aware of, but he is also now a reality star show and uh, uh, a reality show reality show star. And with his background, is no uh, no wonder why they chose him for that. Our guest is Jeff Tucker. Jeff, welcome to the show. Hey, it's great to be here. Um, you know, you said something on the, the that wonderful introduction, by the way. It was just poetic. Um, you said you were going to jump right into me. Please don't do that. Okay, I'll, I'll jump next to you. <laughs> I guess you were jumping right into the show. Yeah. Was that per, it? Yeah. So, uh, f- fig- figuratively speaking, jump into you. Ah, uh, metaphors. I deal in metaphors. Okay. Hey, it's good to, get, good to be here. I who is the bearded guy next to you there? The the bearded guy, that's the millennial. Oh. We just call him oh. the millennial here. I have no other names. <laughs> is, so, that, so, is that like uh, Rush's uh, uh, Mr. Snurdly? Yeah, Bo Snurdly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, instead of, instead of Bo, Slur- Bo Snurdly, I have the millennial. Well, tell him he's got a snickerdoodle hiding in his beard in there. Yeah, he might. There, his, I'm glad you pointed it out. I was a little hungry. Now I know I've got a snack. <laughs> There, there, What's there, going on? There may be elk in there. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, God. Every, everything's going good. Uh, thanks for, for your time on, on coming to the show. I, is there anything I, I, I missed? And another thing I didn't throw out there was, was your ranch management, things you do as, as a hobby just on your ranch there. You've really raised some, some, uh, some great mm. bucks and really done a lot for the wildlife there. Uh, what, what, what else have we missed about you? You know that it, it it just sounds like bragging if I tell you everything you missed. So we'll just <laughs> we'll just go with what you did, and we'll let people look it up because oh, okay. the list is long and distinguished. Okay. Well, anyways, it it is no wonder they chose you. you got a great, interesting background. Uh, so your newest project is uh, a show called uh, that you're featured in, starring in, in a show called Darkness on the Discovery Channel. Right. Yeah. Um. And, and I. You know, it, it's interesting. You've, you've said a couple of words that I guess all of it's kind of, and I understand why you said it. I don't want you to think I'm chastising at all when I say this. I mean, it, it you know, to say reality star show, I, I don't think that's what I am. And 
to say I'm starring in or featured in, it's all new language to me. It, it's strange. Um, but the short answer is, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in their, their first premiere show with, uh, uh, me and two other guys doing an extreme survival challenge, uh, in, in total darkness. Yeah. Uh, so this show features, you were in a cave in Missouri. Is that correct? Yeah. The setup is that there's three of us and we haven't met, um, prior to entering the cave. And the, the gist of the survival challenge is that we, we have different entry points into this cavern. Uh, there's an isolation component for all of us. And then at some point, if we wish, it's, it's really kind of up to our own accord what we want to do. So once we've, we've kind of, you know, for example, I go into the cave, I lose the light, um, and I'm, I'm, you know, really just trying to get a grid of this thing in, in total darkness. And, and that's that's the one thing I think the show will really convey is that we could not see anything. Um, uh, they're using state of the art cameras and infrared and, and night vision for their crew. And we just did not have any of that luxury. So if I put my hand right in front of my face, could not see it. Mm-hmm. Um, no ambient light from uh, from from the crew down there filming. Um, and so. I was put into an isolation area and basically just got told, okay, you're now in your isolation phase, which I knew would be forthcoming uh, from the producers. They told us that. And then the next deal would be, there would be two other individuals in the cave and could we find each other? And then could we find resources, food and water, um, or any other resource that might exist? And then final phase would be as a team, if we did find each other, could we find our way out? And so those were the four big, uh, task at hand, uh, uh, you know, the big broad strokes of it, everything that happened between that is what the show is really about. Now, of course, food is vital for survival, but water is even more vital, more <coughs> an, an immediate thing. How, how long, how long were you, were you without water? Well, and I'll, and I'll give you a, a like all of us kind of came prepared with certain things. Um, we were only allowed to take one sentimental item into the cave. We were allowed to take a particular tool if we wanted to. I, I chose a multi-tool and so never used it, uh, but it was on my hip. And then we were all given a backpack with the same things. And the backpack had a wool blanket in it, um, an emergency radio in case we needed to be extracted uh, or hurt. And then we had a, a video box that we did video diaries on. And you would just open this box up and kind of point it in your direction. And there was an infrared light in it that would, you know, supposedly give you enough light on your face to, to record. Again, we couldn't see that. It's all infrared. Um, and then we were given, I think, 10 foot of paracord each. Mm-hmm. And then the final thing was we were given two four ounce packets of emergency water. So that's all we had going in and what clothes they allowed us to wear, which I brought a big coat with me that got taken away. Uh, so I basically had on a pair of jeans, a long sleeve summer shirt, a hat that got taken away and um, a pair of boots and uh, socks. And I did go commando. I didn't I didn't wear any underwear. Um, <laughs> I know your readers and, and listeners want to know that. Um, so I did commando the whole time I was down there. But no. So. So, yeah. It, I mean, I can tell you this. Um, I went without water for three days. Um and went without food for, for, for five and a half days. Hmm. Um, it was, uh, it was tough. I mean, it, it, you know, and, and it wasn't that we weren't thirsty. I mean, I could, I had enough emergency medical background. I could tell when hypothermia was setting in. I could tell when, you know, I I was no longer sweating or, or, you know, when the dehydration component started to happen, you know, when we found water, it was really a big deal. It was a game changer. And we, we did find it, um, um, it and, and what's interesting, we found it and we lost it, which was also really upsetting. So, I mean, er- everything was just heightened, man. It's, you know, after the mental and physical beat down, you know, part of this component is kind of like SEER school uh, in special operations where you're put into an isolation area, you're in the dark, you're not allowed to leave. You know, it's kind of like a, an us versus them scenario. You feel like a prisoner of war in some respects. And, and, I don't want to elevate myself to that. Those guys are tougher than I am, but, but, but that's kind of the gist of it. I I was in an area that I had to crawl into this small hole 
which was about the size, you know, maybe six foot tall, maybe, maybe six foot tall, uh, four foot wide and about maybe five foot wide, four, five foot by four foot. And, and it wasn't flat. I couldn't lay down to sleep. I couldn't get comfortable. It was cold as hell. Hmm. Um, matter of fact, that, that first, I, th- and I'm, I'm, I, I say things like I, I think it was 24 hours in that I called for a medic cause I had no way of really knowing I, I could guesstimate. Uh, but I actually called for a medic that night just to kind of get, I wanted to get, a for two reasons. One, I wanted to kind of know that they were there and that that component really existed. So I was proving to myself that it did. And then the other part was I wanted a baseline vital reading just to kind of, you kind of know where I was. And, and then it failed on me because they wouldn't tell me. I, I didn't get any information. All, all I got from them is you're within range. Hmm. You know, I'm like, well, okay, great. One medic to another, come on, you know, and they wouldn't tell me, wouldn't tell me my temperature. The other thing I could ascertain was my pulse rate and my breathing rate. Uh, and I could do that on my own, but I mean, I was, my, my teeth sounded like jackhammers, man. I was really, really cold. Hmm. I think they, so I think they told me afterwards is about 48 degrees in the cave. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's, that's darn chilly. It's cold. It wouldn't, all you got is a wet blanket. It's damn cold. Yeah. Wet, sandy blanket. That sucked. Hmm. Um, so I mean, constantly walking into things or walking off of things or, or smacking your hands, your heads into things. That was a, a minute by minute struggle. Yeah, I'd say more second by second. It it it's really it's wild, Mark. I I I had never you know there were things that I was trying to prepare for down there that just I wished I hadn't waste time with. Um, <laughs> you know, prior to going in and, and, and it was the unforeseen things that happened that, that I'm kind of glad that it did because I, on off the cuff, I could make some decisions and off the cuff, I could make some successes. And I say, I, I mean, all of us did, especially when we found each other eventually, but that took some time. It took about two, three days to find everybody. Hmm. Um, so we had a lot of isolation component, even when we were working toward a task, Um, but yeah, you're constantly just feel, you know, you've got a right wall sweep you're doing and you think you're doing great. And then the right wall goes away. Uh, then you're literally left out in the middle of, of, you don't know what, right. You don't know what's in front of you. You don't know what's left of you. You know, you've lost a wall behind you. So what do you do now? And you're also trying to physically and mentally grid the area that you're in. So you can have some semblance of a landmark, Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I did is I put some rocks in my backpack and I would throw them out in front of me to get a gist of, okay, is something in front of me or is something not in front of me? You know, is there a drop off here? That kind of thing. I uh, want one of the, one of the more scarier moments in this and it got real pretty quick was throwing a rock out in front of me and never hearing it hit bottom. Hmm. Um, that was, that's when I realized this just wasn't some stupid reality show. This was, this was the real deal. It, it was a survival challenge. Hmm. Wow. Were, were you, were you, or are you worried that, uh, what you went through and what you experienced will not be what the edited version looks like? <clears throat> yeah. I, I mean, I, I, those feelings got relieved a little bit just a few days ago. I did an interview with people magazine, uh, 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 Shelling, I think was his last name. And, and I, <sighs> I, it was one of my biggest concerns even going into this gig. I, I really almost just told them I wasn't going to do it for that one particular reason because mm-hmm. I didn't want to come across looking right. in a negative light on a national show, international show. I think this is seen in over 220 countries. Uh, they got a pretty big following. But all of a sudden that epiphany kind of hit me. And, you know, I mean, I, I'm a believe it or not, I mean, I'm a professional guy. I've got a business and things that I run. And I thought, man this really may not come across like I want it to uh, or need it to. uh, And I have no control over that. And when you sign that contract, you give up all those rights. Uh, Heck, even up to injury up into death, you know, it's all your fault or, you know, if you're a a bonehead on this, then you're probably going to give them something to edit that just shows you to be a bonehead. So, you know, started thinking about what maybe some of the mental physical things that could be, that could also occur in it. And, I just really kind of thought, man, this gig isn't for me. And so the producer, uh, Rob Bucha, called me and said, you know, why are you wanting to step away? And I, I told him all those reasons just mentioned. And he said, you know, he goes, that's really not what we're shooting for here. You know, he goes, we produce, 
you know, Bear Grylls, Running Wild. We produce uh, Naked and Afraid. We produce Hell's Kitchen, all these shows. And I, I had seen the Bear Grylls show. I didn't. I don't really watch Naked and Afraid, although I, I finally just the other night out of curiosity, I watched it and I thought, oh, OK, they're doing a pretty good job here. Uh, but they're also catching television. So there is drama and there is it is television. Right. I mean, that's right. That's ultimately what this is about. This is not necessarily a documentary per se. So, yeah, the short answer is yes. I was very concerned about it. Long answer was I I got um, I got better with the idea of doing it. And then I finally just said, you know, I think what really hooked me was I would be in a minority of people doing something. You know, when when you start counting the number of people on the globe that a could do this or B would want to and be allowed the opportunity uh, I'd be in a minority there. And that really kind of intrigued me. Mm-hmm. And so I started looking at it differently, saying, you know what? If if I pull a bonehead, OK, I pull a bonehead. I'm human. If I don't and I look good, well, then great. I, I, I did something successful. So I I stopped being so egotistical about it, I guess. And and which I know that's hard for you to believe. But I, I, did. <laughs> I, I wasn't even I wasn't even going to say anything, but somehow you read my well, mind. I saw <laughs> I saw Ryer spit up in his coffee. Cup, so. <laughs> But no, I, but I really did. I, you know, I, I, I look at this thing really differently like the week before going in. I started to say what this is going to be is not necessarily a reality show. It's an opportunity for me to go really unplug. Um, I, I mean, I've been alone out in the woods, out hunting, out surviving, bibwhacking, whatever you want to call it, and been off the grid, but never for such a long period of time and never without all of my senses. And it kind of turned into a meditational philosophical approach to how I was going to deal with this. And it ended up paying off. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of gifts that came out of this thing for me personally. I'm really glad I did it. I don't know if I'd do it again, but I'm really glad I did it. Uh, Have you, have you kept contact with any of your co-stars? Yeah, I, I, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're Brandon and, and, and Jack, Jack Stallings was the guy that we found, I think on the third day and Brandon and I found each other pretty early on. I think like in another maybe 24, 36 hour period, uh, Brandon called out for help, uh, or assistance rather. I don't think he really needed any help, but when he called out, he was stuck on a ledge with no way to get down and thought that there was a big abyss in front of him. And, uh, uh, I heard him call out, and and so I just got my, you know, it's interesting. Uh, they're down there filming, and the only the only cue I got was, you know, you can do whatever you want. It's up to you. This is your this is your survival experience. You don't have to go. You you can go. It's up to you. So those were kind of the rules. And so I reached out and got. Uh, I told Brandon to count to a hundred. I got to him. You know, he was only about maybe six or seven foot up above me, but he was on a ledge and I was tapping, <laughs> tapping the top of the ledge. He goes, are you standing? I'm like, yeah. And he goes, Oh man. I mean, he, <laughs> he was like, no way, you know? And I'm like, yeah. I said, come on. And he curled over on his belly and came down and, and we sat there for hours talking, catching up and getting to know each other and warming up. And, um, and we've stayed in touch a lot. Brandon and I bonded really. It, and plus he was also, he's a current firefighter in, in Shreveport uh, I mean, I hadn't been in the firefighting game since 2001 and that's over 16 years. So, it, you know, but it's kind of a brotherhood there and, and, and we've, we've certainly bonded with that. Um, and we talk, we've made contact every day, hmm. whether it's a text or a call or uh, an email and especially with the show coming to closer, we've been really bantering back and forth a lot about, you know, Wow! Did you see the trailer? What do you think? Because they got Brandon falling in the trailer. You can see him. Yeah, is that, um, is that him who was kind of sliding down that? Yeah, and and if, if you'll, you can just make out three quarters of my body right above him if you'll look really closely. You know, so, uh, but that was a poignant moment. That was. Um, I don't want to give away the scene. I just I'll tell you that that was a, there was something very dramatic that happened right before that and right after that, and it's a. Uh, it was interesting to see it. Um, I'll be honest; I get really emotional seeing it. Um, it was a big deal, and and I didn't know that the trailer was going to have him falling. And 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 you got to understand at that moment too. It it everybody can see it. We had not that luxury, right. and so I'm reaching out in the dark when <laughs> when I literally heard his feet give away. And that and hell, he weighs 249 pounds. He's six foot three. He's a big son of a bitch. 
and 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 I mean that with respect. Um, I reached out for him. You know, I, hell, I don't know where I'm reaching. I didn't have my hand on his backpack, and I've regretted that ever since. I I wished I'd had the handle on the back of his backpack, and if for nothing else, maybe he could have just taken me along for the ride. It'd look really good, but I, you know, I might have been able to keep him from falling, and I was holding on the wall, and then he gave way and, and fell. And it was it's tough, man. It's a tough moment. Would, would um, did they ever? Did the crew ever stop you and say, "Do not take another step"? Um, there was there, yeah. Part of their they, there's a safety officer down there, and if we were going into something that was an absolute no no, could risk death. Yes, mm-hmm. I mean that actually happened to me early on going into the cave. I heard water immediately going into this cave, and so I started gritting toward it. And I was getting into a really tight space trying to get down to it. <clears throat> now, I want to know how long they let me go for. They told me to stop. But, I, you know, but you know, it was almost strange. I felt like this sixth sense creeping up behind me like, you know, this may be a bad idea. And then right about that time, the safety officer said, you can't go any further. You're going to have to find another route. And so, yeah, I stopped. And, um, and I was pissed. I was pissed for a lot of reasons because I realized just how hard I hadn't been in that cave 15 minutes and I realized how hard this was going to be. Um, so I had to remember how, how I got to where I was and grid my way back and try to find another wall to follow, uh, and another path. And, and there was nothing flat in this place. I mean, it, I have got meat (laughs) from my shins on so much crap down there. I mean, jetties that would pop out. I think they even show that in the trailer right now. There's Brandon, uh, the, his first day in walking, he walks literally right into a little jetty, yeah. right out at his face. I, I, I think he fractured a tooth. Well, wow. and um, I mean, you just couldn't see shit. It, it was it was tough. Hmm. Um, I'm sorry. I think I segued from your question, but did I answer? No, it? that's right. Yeah, no, you you did. You did. Um. So w- when uh, get down to it, w- when does this show going to air? Um, it, it, August second is when it's going to come out. It'll be on Discovery. Uh, they're going to have a Naked and Afraid at 8 o'clock. And now I'm talking Central Time, so you have to look up your time zone. I, I know centrally it's 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock, and I think the Eastern is it's 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock. But they're doing it – I think they're doing it over two nights, so they, they'll do a rerun the following night, I think. But uh, um, August 2nd is when it premieres. As a matter of fact, we were the third – I think we were the third or fourth show that they filmed and they liked ours so much, they moved us up to the premiere, which I thought was a nice hat tip, uh, yeah. you know, from the producers. So, uh, yeah, but August 2nd, it, you know, it's during Shark Week, and that's kind of their biggest visual audience. And I don't know whether they'd be happy about that or, <laughs> or have huge chagrin about it, you know. But, but yeah, August 2nd, that's when it is. Cool. So now you've, uh, you've uh, if uh, people want to, learn a little more about Jeff Tucker. You've opened up a Facebook page or a social, some social media thing so people can get to know you and see you a little bit uh, more and learn about you. Yeah. I, I've, I've obviously got a couple of things I do out there as a uh, subject matter expert for CrossFit gymnastics. We've got a page for that and I've got my own personal page I've kept for years, but uh, I went ahead and launched a public uh, public page. That's uh, Jeff R Tucker uh, on Facebook and, you can see my ugly mug there. I got the little discovery banner and picture up there. And, uh, very good um, portrait. I'm sorry. That's a very good portrait of you, Jeff. Oh, thanks. I, pre- I, I rarely get to look good, Ryer. I appreciate that. And that's a very nice shirt you've got. <laughs> Thank I you. Like your shirt. But no, I, yeah, they did. I mean, and I'm, I'm supposed to be getting all types of material, but I did, I, I kind of want to do something with this. I don't know what it is yet. Uh, and by that, I don't mean celebrity or stardom. I, I, you know, I, I mean, you know me, Mark, I've, I've been doing a seminar for well over a decade and I've thought about, even before this came along, I've thought about doing more motivational and guest speaker stuff. Uh, I've been doing that a little bit over the years and, and I kind of maybe want to hone more toward that, especially after this experience. Uh, I've been unpacking a lot of things uh, that happened from this event and outlining that and getting it into a uh, a seminar format. And I think there's some great lessons to, to come from it, but yeah, you can go to Jeff R. Tucker on Facebook and I've got uh, Jeff R. Tucker.com, uh, will be my, my new website and it's coming out. 
uh, right before the show. And but most of everything I'm doing is geared toward, um, you know, doing some guest lecturing and, and motivational speaking and talking about uh, something near and dear to my heart. And that's service and what it means to be of service and, and a life after service uh-huh. and, and service can be anything. But obviously my background as a firefighter and bomb tech police officer and EMT and all the things that I did with, um, uh, my professional career. Um, uh, you know, I've got a lot of great stories and experiences from that and how that translates into daily life. That's kind of where I'm going with it, I think. So let's backtrack a little bit. We got a little more time here. You were all those, uh, things that you mentioned there. And then you, from there, you jumped, uh, into cro- CrossFit. Is that, is that correct? Or they jumped into you or, or you, your paths crossed or how, how did, how did the life of Jeff Tucker segue from public service to CrossFit? Um, you use that jumped into me terminology again. It just really throws me. Um, I, <laughs> sorry. um, no, I, I jumped into it. Um, I mean, I retired in 2001 and then started some personal private businesses there in Fort Worth and did that and, 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 and really did well with it. We, you know, we kept that business there for about a decade, uh, which was GSX athletics. Um, and then we parlayed that into GSX CrossFit. And then I did the seminars from there. And, um, that was another way of being of service too. I mean, being able to teach and coach and uh, provide training and, and fitness around a, a gymnastic format, if you will. And we developed that for CrossFit itself back in the early days. And so we've been doing that seminar now globally for over a decade. And and it's just for me, just another way to do two things. One, get to teach something I know about, but also showing how something like that can be of service to others. And, you know, it's no different than what you do out there at the ranch. I mean, think about you know, all the things that you do and how they're of service to people, whether it be maybe this is their first hunt uh, or having a successful hunt and teaching how to hunt uh, or teaching how to manage. I mean, you and I talk about that a lot. I mean, I've, I've learned a lot from you. I, I, I think maybe you might have learned one or two things from me, but but all of that is, a, is, is what we're kind of here to do. So I look at things from a standpoint of, uh, you know, how can I be of service to somebody? you know, and how they are to me and how I can emulate that. Um, but yeah, I, that's, you know, when I jumped into that, that's, uh, it was kind of an extenuation of, I, I think of trying to continue to do what I cut my teeth on as a young man. I mean, my dad was a firefighter and, and I think a lot of that obviously drenched over me, uh, uh, growing up and, um, wanted to emulate that and, and, because I grew up around all those men who that's what's what they did. And it wasn't the sum of their parts. It was one of their things that they did. I, I also learned a lot from those guys. Gosh, I mean, we, dad used to take me out hunting and fishing with all these guys. And, and you, you never, I mean, and I know you'll appreciate this. You've been around friends of your father, for example, mm-hmm. you know, the older guys when you're the younger guy and, mm-hmm. and you just kind of sit back and take it all in and you listen and you watch and you learn and, and, um, there's so many of those old codgers. I wish I could go back and shake their hands and say, Hey, thanks for imparting that to me. Uh, or scarring me. Depends on who it was. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Exa- I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, anyway, yeah, you know, something here, we'll, we'll get, we'll get a beat up on some millennials more a little bit here. Um, so, some of my favorite, yeah. favorite, uh, do I need to escape to my safe space? Yeah. Go to your safe <laughs> space right now. But, uh, so back uh, back in the day when I was a teenager or, or early twenties, before and actually, freeze-dried food, yeah, before freeze-dried food and before music was invented, um, <laughs> my, that's what my my kid asked me one time was, uh, D- Dad, uh, were you around when music was invented? So it, it, did they get up off the ground when you were done with them? After you <laughs> backhanded them across the face? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anyways, so but part part <laughs> quack. Sorry. Yeah. But, but part part of I don't want to say a rite of passage, but part of my duty was so when we're all together hunting was uh, my 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 uh, my contribution towards this was dishes, cleaning up after everybody, uh, serving, 
uh, food, uh, r- really just uh, as a, uh, I, I was there to be a, um, to there to make their life easier. And then uh, what I could enjoy, what was left over, uh, the, you know, the hunting or, or listening in on conversations and stuff like that. Um, well, that, 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 that was great. And then it continued on as, as someone who's continued on hunting with my dad and his friends at, uh, 56 years old, I'm still doing dishes. I'm still sweeping the floors. Now I've, we've had some younger kids come in and join, uh, some, some of these groups now back. So they are, um, what, what, what I was, but they have a, a different mentality on their role in things. So they, uh, they, they, they seem to have a, this, this, they seem to have this strange feeling that they're my equal. Yeah. I, 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 they didn't pay their dues they, yet. Yeah. So, it, it, and, and, and so they, they sit around the, the, the dinner table and, and smoke cigars and drink wine actually frequently while I'm sitting there cleaning up after them. So I'm still in the, I've still got the crab duties and, and the millennials, they, they seem to have, they seem to have leapfrogged me, but I've noticed that's pretty much true of everything in life around me. Um, I'm not sure if that has something to do with you or them or both. I, 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 you know, I think at this point I would tell you that, no, you're not going to help them dig the sheetrock out of their mouth when they grab that first glass of wine that they need to get over there and clean up. And you'll be having a bottle of wine and three cigars. You know, maybe that's one approach. Uh, I, I, you know, it's interesting. I remember I was moving something in the gym one day and we had hired this young kid. Uh, this is going way back, way back, like 2006. And so I was you know, I asked him to grab a bag of tools. And at one point I said, hey, hand me the Phillips screwdriver. And he didn't know what that was. Um, that's kind of sad. Uh, that, you know, I asked him who his father was, what his father did for a living. And, you know, he proudly gave me all the answers. And uh, I could quickly ascertain from the, the Q&A that his father was part of the problem. Um, because he never taught him anything, you know, um, and I, I completely get that. There's a lost generation of individuals who don't understand what it means to, to earn it. Um, and I hate to blanket that with just, you know, a group generation X or millennials or whatever the hell it is. But, you know, I guarantee you there's a huge learning curve between those out here in Brown County in Brownwood, Texas and Fort Worth and Tarrant County. I mean, you're going to, you know, one's a city. There's a different set of, of, of things going on in, in development based off of area, I think, versus out here where, you know, maybe hunting is more a, a part of daily life. It's not just, you know, recreation. It's a subsistence type of living. Everybody likes deer meat or, you know, the ones that hunt rather do. And, and you know, people work on their own cars. And I mean, there's just, I mean, you could go on and on and on about that. But I, I, I do hear you. I, it, it was so interesting. My first time into the fire hall, when I got out of the fire academy, I, I made the mistake of reaching for the morning paper to open it and look at it. And the captain had not yet mm. read it. Um, I learned very quickly where my pecking order was at that <laughs> moment. Uh, I can't use the words that were given to me that day, but um, I never made that mistake again. And, you know, but it was always cool, too, because you'd also see the captain in there cleaning the toilets every day, you know, if, if he grabbed them first or... You know, everybody, everybody pitched in and did the work that needed to be done. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and I even think, you know, the old men around the campfire, they did that too. I'm, I'm with you though. I, you know, we, we all kind of had our part in our pecking order and it was, it was out of respect that we did what we did for the ones that came before us. But for those that try to leapfrog, yeah, I just basically want to pull them back and explain to them how life really is. Well, if I was there, if I was their father, I probably would, but, uh, since I'm not, I can't, so. Um, I don't know. I think you can. Maybe you're doing a, a duty to them to explain to them what the real world is. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, feces for brains. Get over here. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, wait, feces for brains? Feces for brains. Feces. Oh, <laughs> this okay. is a G-rated podcast. Well, oh, it was, it was, until, it was until you came on it anyway. As I made some mistakes, my apologies. I did not know. I thought it was an <laughs> R and or X-rated show. I apologize. All right. Well, we kind of uh, segued there. Uh, I was in the dark. Get it? Oh, <laughs> boom, boom. Psh. 
Sorry. We did segue. My apologies. <laughs> no. Mark uh, and Jeff segueing? Never. Never. No. Well, <clears throat> is there anything we uh, we missed there that's going to, that's, you know, you've, you've been an inspiration to a lot, lot of people, had a lot of people following you through the gymnastics and, uh, excuse me and and uh, they're going to be interesting to interested to get to know you on your on your show on the show darkness uh do we uh do we skip over anything that uh that I, I think it's going to just naturally skip over by itself i'm going to get about six minutes of fame here that everybody's going to forget about me and i'm okay with that <laughs> um i i think uh yeah because you know the real reality of this thing is this it's it's just a one hour show i mean there's i think there's 47 minutes of footage on this thing from six days and there's two other great guys in it, and, you know, it's not all about me. It's about what, what we did and what we accomplished. I think, you know, the real teaser on this is that if, if we didn't find a way out, then they pull you out, and I'll let that just hang out there. I'm not going to tell you whether we actually made it or not, so you can kind of watch it and, and see. But, I mean, at least have a good, you know, Chianti or a beer of your pleasure as you sit next to it and laugh. I mean, there's, I'm sure there's some funny crap in it. I I'm sure there's going to be an outtakes video, <laughs> much to my chagrin, one day. I, I, you know, it's interesting you mentioned G-rated. I, at one point, I finally told the guy, I said, look, I, you know, I've been in this thing now for a couple of hours, and I can't not cuss when I run into something and hurt myself, you know. And he goes, oh, he goes, that's okay. You cuss away, you know. And I said, okay. <laughs> and the floodgates opened, you know. <laughs> so. So uh, it turns out they've got really good editors for this family show they're producing. So, um, uh, you know, but I, the, the, it was really cool. They let us be ourselves. And, uh, you know, that's all I'm going to be. You know, I, there's not any big mystery here. I don't know what else could be said. Uh, it, it was a good time. And, um, you know, I, I, I think the gifts that came from this are, are more private than anything uh, you know, I, I, I did view the world a little differently after I got out and, and that's still ongoing. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and viewed it in a good way. I mean, there's just some things I want to do better, you know, um, it kind of lit a fire under my ass. It, it's been, uh, excuse me, a fire under my backside. I apologize, Ryer, for you having to edit that. Um, no, we'll, you know, we'll leave it. Yeah. So, I mean, I just want to do some things, um, better. And I, and I also want to do some other challenges. I'm, I, I, you know, I've, I've gotten, I think, complacent out here at the ranch and letting that kind of be my conduit, uh, to a fulfillment in total. And, and I think you've even known that just, you know, you've invited me to some of the greatest fishing areas in the world and I just didn't go cause I didn't want to leave the place. And, right. and I'm, I'm kind of forcing myself out of that shell again. And, and that's good. You know, um, mm -hmm. beca because you know what, man, I can, I could be out here at the ranch and stay here and I don't need anything else. Yeah. I, I really, I really have But So it took a lot for me to make that leap. And then when I told him I would do it, well, I had to, at that point, you know, mm -hmm. I signed contracts, <laughs> <laughs> you know, stupidly signed contracts. Ne and by the way, my day rate's going up if I'm doing this crap again. Uh, uh, you know, but I mean, there was no. You know, it wasn't like, hey, can you beat this one guy in the cave? It was a team thing. And, you know, we got paid uh, by the day and the day rate was really not at all worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I donated my check anyway. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, But anyway. Well, our, our guest is Jeff Tucker. The show is Darkness on the Discovery Channel on August 2nd. Is that correct? Debuting August 2nd? Uh August 2nd, yeah. That'll August be 2nd. about the time I'll be putting my game cameras out and see what kind of deer is coming in. All right. So hopefully you guys can all check that out. Jeff, thank you very much for joining us today. It was a great interview, and uh, I'm sure the uh, I'm, I'm sure the world's going to get to know a lot more about you here in a little while. I'm, I'm afraid so, for better or worse. And I, appreciate, I really do appreciate you guys' interest in this. Uh, I hope it speaks to your audience, and I hope that when they watch the show they can – I do think there's some skills that we brought out in there, um, you know, from our background. So I hope they enjoy it. Should be a good time. Be good for a laugh anyway. <laughs> Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. You bet, guys. Anytime. Okay. Again, Jeff Tucker show Darkness on the Discovery Channel, August second. So you guys all make sure you can check that out. Ryer, do we got anything else uh, for our listening audience? 
Well, if you are curious, you can go to uh, the Facebook page for the show, which is www.facebook.com slash darkness TV. And I think they have a trailer up there that you can watch. Um, we've mentioned it a couple times. So if you want to see that, you can check it out there. You can also find more podcasts, some of our videos, and uh, all sorts of media from us at any one of our locations online. We've got MarkRupeeOutdoors.com, and we've got Instagram and Facebook, Mark Rupee Outdoors, and also YouTube, Mark Rupee Outdoors. So how about this? For our hat giveaway, our code word is darkness. So anyone who listens to the podcast and follows us on the Facebook page, you hit us with a with a hashtag darkness. Should we should we do, millennial? Should we should we do hashtag darkness? We can. Okay. So hashtag for, darkness. The, the the first person who gives us a hashtag darkness gets a free Mark Groupies outdoor hat or a bottle of olive oil. Your choice. Well, I think that about wraps it up today. Thank you guys very much for joining us and spending time with us. Hope you learned a little bit about what's going on. We'll keep you posted on on the fire updates in Mariposa County. And until next time, have a great one.